BrethrenNews.com Presence I praise God for this opportunity that He has given me to stand in a witness, as a witness for God Himself. It is a great privilege to become a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the last 50 years or so, the Lord has enabled me to uh, be His witness and witness Him in various parts of the world. And I indeed praise his uh, great name for that privilege that he has given me. As you, many of you are known by now, I was a, a teacher way back in the state of Kerala. When I was 26 years old, the Lord, I heard the Lord's calling and he had separated me unto his work. After the Lord had called me, I only stayed about 15 days in the state of Kerala. Afterwards, I started and went to the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu. Uh, before that, I had never been into that uh, those areas or in Tamil Nadu. I did not know the language that they were speaking Tamil. But I was uh, confident and I was more assured that God is sending or leading me to go into that place. So I took a train and went to a place called Chengota. When I went there for the first time, I had this feeling as if I'm going to a strange country, like coming to the United States. It was such a strange feeling. There the, all the people were unknown to me, and then the language that they, spe they spoke uh, was not known to me. I, from that uh, spot, Chengote onwards, I started. I began visiting some villages and other places and traveled and came to this place called Madurai. As I came to Madurai, I was confirmed again that this was the place that the Lord wants me to be and to continue his ministry. So I took a small, I lived in a place uh, in for a couple of uh, days and then I went to the home and I started living there. And for the past 50 years, the Lord has been leading me and through many different and wonderful ways. And uh, right now there are about eight different assemblies in and around the city of Madurai as a result of our, go our, our work for the Lord. For the past 38 years, the Lord has enabled us to uh, establish and found a Bible institute and train many young people. As a result of which, uh, many young uh, men and women were trained in that institute and they were they have scattered around the city of Madurai and also outside Tamil Nadu in various parts of India. The Lord had given me eight children and I have uh, 24 grandchildren. Uh, so in a way that I am a great great grandfather. A big great grandfather. Uh, in that way that all the children are in the, uh, in, uh, they, they are on the Lord's side and they are uh, involved in many various kinds of ministries and serving the Lord in different parts of the world. They are all married. Uh, I have uh, three boys and, and I mean, five boys and three girls. And all the three girls have been married to uh, full time evangelists. And uh, all of them are involved in the Lord's work in, in North India. 
Out of the five boys, three of them are uh, staying with me in Madurai and they're helping me in the Lord's work. One of my son is in, is in charge of the uh, Subhisheshagan magazine and also the press and he takes care of those uh, activities. The other son is involved in the uh, and taken the responsibilities of the Bible Institute and also the, uh, the assemblies. My other son is involved in a, a musical group called Me uh, uh, Melody and Happy, Happy Melody and he is involved in the uh, music ministry and thus he is serving the Lord. And the other two uh, boys, one of them, uh, they are, uh, he is in the United States and the other one uh, is in Dallas and the other one is in Saudi Arabia. I said all these things that, uh, so that you can continue to remember us in your prayers and our ministry that we are involved for the Lord. Uh, Indeed, it is the result of the many uh, prayers of wonderful children of God that I am able to continue in the ministry and move on for the Lord oh, Jesus Christ. So I request that when you pray, please remember us also, you know, in your prayers. Uh, my dear wife, uh, who has been so helpful in my ministry, was uh, was uh, taken away from uh, me about nine years ago. Uh, for the last nine years, uh, the Lord is leading me uh, in a way, in a way, in a life of uh, uh, solitude or, or loneliness. And uh, during these years of uh, loneliness, uh, the Lord has enabled me to uh, uh, compose a song and then I want to sing a, one or two stanzas of that Malayalam song. I have written so many songs, but I am not a good uh, um, uh, singer. <laughs> if you hear me singing, you, know, you might think that is this the man uh, indeed wrote those songs. <laughs> you, may, you may ask me why are you then going to sing? <laughs> I'm just singing because it, uh, it gives me happiness and joy. Uh, most of the songs, uh, some of the songs I wrote is, uh, was basically to, for my own uh, singing. Uh, but, uh, others are singing, that's all. <laughs> most of the sings, uh, songs were written so that uh, I can sing myself. <laughs> and uh, even though I don't have that talent, but uh, I rejoice in singing those songs. Uh, on, on, the, uh, on the separation of my dear wife, I had to put my trust in the Lord and then uh, so, and put this song together, and that is I'm going to sing now. Yaneshwe yen jivane yen na jani matrama yen na jani matrama yen na jani matrama yaneshwe yen jivane yen na jani matrama. Yenna Jani Matrama Yenna Jani Matrama Jogam Dagarin Yenne Ganga Neran Jogam Dagarin Yenne Ganga Neran Yenganda Ni Ullila Shwazama Vaigaran <laughs> 
We all know that uh, Peter was one of the uh, most, uh, uh, most, signif- more, most important uh, apostles or uh, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, we know that at the time of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Peter was the one who happened to deny the Lord and uh, stay away from Him. But uh, we know that after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord appeared to Peter uh, and met him. When Peter knew that uh, uh, his uh, dear Savior, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, had risen and he is no more dead, he uh, got the courage and he came back and started to serve the uh, service master. Now on the day of Pentecost, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in that one day, uh, uh, because of his preaching about the Lord, there were 3,000 people uh, converted and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and they were baptized. And we know that uh, uh, Peter, who was once uh, gone backslidden and, and gone away from the Lord and came back and uh, lived for the Lord Jesus Christ for the rest of his life. Uh, we have uh, two epistles that he had written. And these particular two epistles have a, 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 a special uh, nature of this because it was one that gave uh, so much courage and encouraged these, uh, the, the believers who were going through so much tribulation at that time. Uh, we know Peter is the one who had used that particular phrase, uh, Christians, in his writings. Uh, in uh, chapter 4, verse 16, uh, it says, uh, uh, having a good conscience, that whereas he's... Uh, 4, 4.16 uh, 4.16 and that uh, may be a shame that falsely accused uh, your good conversation in Christ uh, it is uh, 4.16 oh, I'm sorry 4.16 it reads uh, uh, if, if any man suffer as a Christian let him not be ashamed 
but let him glory uh, God on, his, on, on this behalf. Uh, in those days, if you were a Christian, it, uh, one thing that you can be assured is uh, that you're going to suffer for Christ. <laughs> but nowadays, when, you, when somebody becomes a Christian, he is gaining uh, more good things or better things. <laughs> but in those days, when uh, someone becomes a Christian, uh, he is going to suffer for Christ. <laughs> and so uh, Peter wrote these epistles to encourage or give them the strength of, for those Christians who are going through suffering. <laughs> Uh, there, uh, here in this particular verse that we read in chapter 3 verse 15, he says you should be always be ready to give an answer to those who ask about your faith in fear and in, in love, in meekness. Uh, he says about the hope that is in you. You saw the people will ask you about the hope that you have in your heart. So then Peter says, if somebody is asking you about the hope that is in your heart, you have to explain and give an answer to those people who ask you in, in meekness and in fear. So we know that the Christians in those days, although they were suffering, but they, they were the ones who had hope in their heart. <laughs> so the, those days people used to ask these Christians about their hope in their hearts. Uh, sometimes when they, uh, when they see a Christian, they will ask you, how come you are so happy and glad? How come your, uh, your face shows such a hope in your life? A true Christian, when somebody else looks at him, uh, there's always this uh, uh, this demonstration or glaring of uh, of hope and, and peace in his life. I, uh, I I trust that all of us gathered this evening here are Christians. I hope that uh, all of us here are uh, one way or the other known as Christians. But uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, does uh, if somebody looks at you, are they going to ask you this question, uh, why is that such a hope in your life or, or peace in your life? <laughs> or when people look at you, are they going to ask you, how come you are so sad all the time when we look at you? Uh, no, maybe you don't have a, a much joy in your life. Uh, your face looks uh, 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 so long and and unhappy. Or when people uh, see you, are they going to ask you, how come you, uh, you are so happy all the time? Although I heard that you have some problems in your home and uh, your health is not uh, good, but uh, still, uh, you are looking at your face, you have uh, showing so much joy in your life. Uh, when you look at a, a child of God, a Christian, and uh, you can see in his face the joy of the Lord. I uh, went to conduct a few uh, meetings in a place called Belgaum in India. I went uh, the, in, a, in one evening in a, in a place where uh, the, the hospital where all the uh, lepers were there. Uh, all of them were lepers. There were not even one person who were not uh, inflicted by this disease. And all those uh, lepers, you can see their uh, deformed bodies and their hands and everything just so crippled. I was uh, speaking in English and there was another missionary who was able to translate that into Canaries where uh, these lepers could understand the, uh, the message. Before the uh, uh, preaching was uh, begun, the missionary asked me a question. Uh, he told me that all these people who are going to come for the meeting, they are all lepers. Uh, but he said there may be five or six uh, believers among those le lepers. 
and all those believers are go, uh, usually sit in one place. Uh, he asked me, can you identify the, those Christians or believers sitting together? There were about 300 lepers sitting in that hall. Everybody is uh, uh, are lepers. They're all, uh, they have deformed bodies and their nose and everything else. But there were about five or six believers. Uh, they were all sitting together. So the uh, missionary asked me, can you identify those five Christians also. So I looked at those audience and then I asked him, are those those people who are sitting in that particular place? And he said, you are correct, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the other They are believers. How did I know that they were believers? Uh, not that because they have less leprosy. They were all uh, inflicted by the disease. Although they were lepers, but they, uh, look at their face, you can particularly see. There was a particular light or a, or a, a glory on their, on their face. They were full of hope. And uh, tonight, my friends, I want to ask you that particular question. Are you, uh, are, is your life full of hope and are you a hopeful person? May, uh, if the people uh, look at you, are they in a position or are they compelled to ask you that question? Uh, are you? Uh, uh, how come you have such a hope in your life? Even if they ask you a question, how can you answer them? Some people may uh, tell, no, please don't ask those questions to me. You know, I go to church, I'm a poor believer. Come and ask my pastor on a Sunday and then he will give you the answer. I'm only a member in that church. I don't know how to answer these questions. Uh, you come and just ask our pastor or, uh, or our leader, you, he might give you an answer. Maybe if, uh, if somebody asks you so many other questions, you may be able to answer them. Uh, if you ask them about your, about your job, you'll be able to answer them. If they ask you about your family things, they, you're able to answer And so many hundred, hundred and one things, they, if they ask you questions, you will uh, give them the answer without any season. But are you able to uh, give an answer for, to those who ask you about your salvation or about your hope in your life? Are you able to give them an answer? But uh, I'm sure that if you have that experience, you will be able to give that answer. And this is something that you should be able to answer and it is that you are able to answer this question. This is not something that you have to uh, go deeper into your life and learn so many things to answer, but these are very simple truths that you can give the answer to those people who ask about your salvation. You don't have to go to a Bible seminary to uh, learn and then give an answer to this people. You don't have to have any special education or training to give an answer. If you have any personal experience, then you can uh, give an answer to those who ask you the question. It says uh, those who ask you about the uh, about you know, the reason of the hope that is in you, you should be able to give an answer with hope, uh, uh, with uh, meekness and fear. Uh, God's children are always hopeful. They always have a hope in them. First uh, Thessalonians, uh, we can see what Paul says. Uh, uh, chapter four and First Thessalonians, chapter four. Uh, verse 13. The whole Mare Ningal Patia said that the Matula reported to Kalikan, the Nitravolu Nerekurche, Arivida Nikirden, Nangalagri. The whole Mare Ningal Patia said that the Matula reported. It says, you know, I have, uh, brother, I would not have you to be ignorant uh, concerning of them which are uh, of sleep uh, like others. Right, uh, uh, and like those who do not have any faith uh, or hope. It says uh, those of uh, 
like those who don't have a hope in their life. We can, uh, we can divide the people in the world into two different uh, sections. Uh, one who have hope and the other one does not have hope. Uh, when uh, Paul the Apostle emphasizes the other group, he says the people who do not have hope in their life. We can divide the people in the world into two different groups, one with hope and the other one without hope. Uh, but the, uh, God's children always have faith or hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the people who have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. They will not be ignorant or they will not be sorrowful uh, or, uh, uh, even if uh, they see somebody dying or even contemplating their own death. They can always ask the question, uh, Oh, death, where is your victory? If we divide the people into two different groups, let me ask you this question, which group will you belong to? Whether the one that you have hope or the one that you don't have hope? Uh, let's also turn to the book of Job. Uh, chapter 27, uh, verse 8. Job, uh, the book of Job, chapter 27, and verse 8. Uh, for what is the hope of the hypocrite, uh, though he hath gained when God taketh away his soul? Here the, here the word of God says, what is the hope that a soul will have if God taketh away his life uh, away from him? And also in chapter 11, and verse 20, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the, uh, as the giving up of the ghost. Uh, it says, you know, their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. And uh, those people have only hope when they uh, die or give up their ghost. The only hope that they have in their life is one day we are going to just die. That is why many people who have no hope, they uh, commit suicide. When they, when they are so disappoint, uh, disappointed or, or, or desperate, they want to end their life and they commit suicide. They don't have any hope for the tomorrows in their life. They cannot answer to the question, why I am living for this world, uh, in this world. If the, uh, the only hope that they have at that time is to die. They but uh, how does the uh, hope of a believer? The, book, uh, the epistle of Hebrews chapter uh, 6 verse 19. There we can see the, uh, the, about the hope of a believer. It says which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. And it says both sure and steadfast which enter into the uh, into that within the veil. But the, the hope of a child of God is something that takes you beyond the, uh, the veil or, or the death. Uh, what is the meaning when we say that go beyond this veil? When you die, you go, you go beyond the veil. Uh, when you die, you just don't disappear or, or become nothing. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a stage when a, an actor is uh, performing and after he performs his acts and everything he just disappears 
uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> and after your life is over, you are going to disappear from this scene and you are going beyond the whale. <laughs> but uh, the hope of a child of God uh, goes with him beyond the whale. <laughs> but the hope of a godless person uh, stays with this side of the veil and it ends with, uh, with his dying. After the, after the death, he doesn't have anything to hope for. He doesn't know after death where he's going. If he asks someone, uh, some people a question like, what is going to happen after you die? They will just uh, flip their hands and say, they don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. He say, uh, they may say that God knows everything. If you do not know what is going to happen when you die and after the, your death, uh, that, that means you are one of the persons who don't hope people who don't have a hope. But if your hope just ends uh, uh, in this world and as you die, you probably is the worst uh, person living in this world. But the hope of a child of God uh, takes him beyond the veil of his death. Uh, what for Apostle Paul says, he says, it is better for me to leave this world than be with Christ. He says uh, to live uh, is, uh, is, is, is Christ and to, uh, uh, to, to die is gain. He says to die is gain or it is better for me to die. What, is, what do you say when well, something is gainful to us? When it says that uh, uh, the, the, that is being calculated when your income is more than what you spend, then you get a result which is gained to you. Uh, he says, when I die, my expenses are lower now and then I get more, more things to gain. Uh, what is the expense that you have when you die? When you die, what is the expense? Uh, this uh, body is going to be wasted. <laughs> we cannot take this body with us. Uh, when we live, we probably will take care of the body uh, with all kinds of care, uh, care but uh, when we die, when we have to leave and, uh, and go. Uh, our home. Uh, the, bank, the, ba the balance that we have in our banks, our friends, they're all in the, in the group of expenses or it's going to disappear. So if you put that all group as expense, what is, going to, uh, what is that you're going to gain when you die and leave this world? <laughs> Uh, Apostle Paul says in the, in the Epistle of Corinthians, he says, I will be leaving this, uh, uh, this tabernacle and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to take up that tabernacle that God has prepared for me. And my Lord is there to I have a home that is not going to be uh, ruined. When I die that way, I'm going to lose certain things, but I'm going to gain more, and that is going to be much better. What a great hope that Paul has. And that hope leads him beyond that veil. Do you have that hope that will take you beyond the veil? We do not know when uh, death is going to come. We do not know what age the death will approach. We are sure that we are here today, but tomorrow we are not sure whether we will be here. How many, how many people have been taken away from this world without any expectation? Let me ask you this question. Now, those of you gathered here, how many of you have that uh, hope of eternity? It's a uh, uh, Paul says, my hope is like an anchor which uh, holds me uh, uh, just like a ship. It is also taking me beyond that veil. 
Uh, most of the people who are not uh, uh, who are not saved, all that they have is uh, they, they can they, they have is beyond uh, this side of the veil. And you have to leave all this when the death is coming. Well, but when you go beyond the veil, what do you have with you? And I can can you say that I have a home there? God is there is a big uh, fellowship that I'm going to enjoy with all the saints that are there. And I'm also going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the hope that is taking you beyond the veil. And none of the religions in the world will be able to take you, give you that hope that will take you beyond the veil. It is only through the Lord Jesus Christ that we can uh, attain this hope or, or receive this hope. Uh, in this particular book, uh, let us see what he uh, further says about it. It's in the uh, book of Hebrews. Yes. Uh, chapter 6. Uh, let's uh, read uh, chapter 6, verse 18. Uh, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope uh, set before us. In verse 19 it says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, and, and both sure and steadfast. It is uh, something that is going to take you beyond the veil. And it also says it is a sure and a steadfast hope. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you, you might attain this. Uh, sometimes you might get those things. Uh, after I die, I might go there into heaven. No, that hope is not that kind of thing. I doubt those things. It says it is a sure and a steadfast hope. Why it is sure and steadfast? There are because of two reasons. Uh, number one. It says God cannot lie. And then it says because God's promises cannot be changed. Our our uh, our hope is sure or steadfast. Because it is not something that we imagine because it is going to be a strong and sure. Because it is God cannot say any lie that he is the one who is giving us. God, with God everything is possible but it is only one thing that is impossible with God. God cannot say a lie. Even if God tries to do, He cannot do it. <laughs> that is why our hope is so sure and so steadfast. Uh, God's words will never change. And not only that God cannot lie, but His words will not change. In, uh, in India, back in India, when the election takes place, uh, there will be a lot of uh, propaganda and uh, and election uh, things going on. Uh, so many people walking around to get their votes. He says, uh, if, uh, if I get elected, I will put electricity and lights uh, all these uh, streets. And uh, now I know that you all have very uh, difficulty for water, but if I am elected, I will give you uh, the, uh, the water system and pipe and everything else. And uh, all your uh, damaged streets and other things, I will put uh, cement and, and uh, make them all good. So please give me your vote. I can make all this happen. And everybody put their vote, uh, uh, put the cast their votes for him. And the man uh, he had, the, he had won. Uh, if you go back and ask him, oh, how come we didn't get any lights? Then he will say, you know, I cannot do it now. Uh, the, later we'll see. Later ones we'll see. Uh, why are you saying that? 
See, all those circumstances have changed. All the things have changed now. A man who cannot uh, keep his word. But God will not save such things. God will never say that such things and uh, all those days were all different now. Uh, you have so many changes in all over the world and I'm not able to do and so I'm sorry, uh, that's not our God. Uh, I was sitting in a... In a uh, the, 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 we, were, we were there in, a, in an assembly, to, they had some problems. Uh, they, the problem they had was one of the brothers had gone back from his work. So I, uh, we asked them, uh, is, that, is that right that you uh, went back on your work? You know what the brother said? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he put this in a way that uh, uh, the, it is my word and it, uh, the, uh, it, it, I only one who can uh, get away from our word. <laughs> he said it is, uh, it is my word so I am the one who can, who can go, away from our, uh, go away from my word or, or uh, stay back. <laughs> Uh, that's how the people were. Uh, they think that they have the right to uh, to break their promises. So. But the God all those words, all those promises that God has given us uh, hundreds and thousands of years ago, they're all going to be fulfilled. Uh, uh, we have so many multitudes of examples uh, how God has performed the promises. God has given promises to Abraham. God has given promises to the children of Israel. And all those promises have fulfilled without any change of uh, one word. God cannot uh, uh, say a line. God cannot change His promises. His words will not change. That is the only reason why we can be so sure about our, our promise. So we do not have to uh, worry about whether our hope will be there when we die or we do not have any. Our hope is built on the promises of God which will never change. Uh, in the book of Acts chapter 26, in verse 6 it says, in chapter 26 verse 6 and 7, And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, Unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly uh, serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused oh. of the Jews. He says, I am standing before you because of the hope that I have. It says that hope is the promise made of God. <laughs> My hope is on the promise or the word of God in itself. It is not our feeling or our imagination. Some people uh, try to uh, depend or, or put faith on their own feelings. Uh, actually, we should not uh, put faith on our own feelings, but we should put faith or hope on the Word of God. I have uh, conducted many marriages. In Tamil Nadu, you have to have a license to conduct uh, weddings. I have a license given by the government. So I am also a marriage registrar. Uh, I, I conducted a wedding. After the wedding, the uh, the the, uh, the bridegroom came to me and, and told me. Uh, <laughs> He says, he says, I don't feel like I got married now. I am the same as uh, before I, I got married. I feel the same thing. I don't feel as if I was married now. I have conducted the wedding. I had uh, put their hands together. All those, all, all those covenants and pledges were all made. And they, he has signed on the register. Both of them signed. Uh, brother also signed. And all the witnesses signed. And everything was finished. 
Still he comes back and says, I don't feel like I got married. I, what can I tell to this young man? I told him, it is no more your feeling. Everything is in record now. You have to put your faith in this books. It is no more your feeling because all these things have been recorded and your marriage has been conducted by a registrar who have a license and you have to put faith in those documents and take that as your life. It is, we have to have that kind of a hope in the word of God. Your feelings will change uh, day after day. You should not put your trust on your feelings. A God who could not lie and the promises that he has given and in the word of God, that's where we have to put our trust. And God, the word of God says us. God's word says that the, uh, the, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And God's word says that if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life. God's word says for those who uh, received him as they uh, uh, received them into their life, to them he gave the power to become a God. And in that word of God is where I put my trust. That is our hope. Uh, okay, let me ask you those who have uh, gathered here this evening, can you, can you say this from your heart that you have put your trust in the word of God and that's where your hope and is built on it. Uh, there is another reason why our faith is so sure. Uh, First Peter and, uh, chapter 1 verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Resurrection of Jesus Christ. It says, because of the resurrection of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, our hope has become a lively hope. The other uh, sureness that we have about our hope is because our Lord Jesus Christ has risen from death and He is a risen Savior. If our Lord Jesus Christ had the end of His life on the cross of Calvary and He just disappeared like that, we cannot say anything about our hope if that was the case. 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15, uh, uh, Paul uh, says like this. In, uh, in verse 14 it says, uh, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. <coughs> and, it, and it says in verse 17, And if Christ be not ris uh, raised, uh, your faith is uh, vain. Uh, ye are yet in your sins. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If the Lord has not risen, our hope and our faith has no meaning. And if the Lord Jesus Christ is truly alive today, if He has indeed risen from the dead, if the Lord, uh, because of His resurrection, He has uh, given us that assurance 
uh, on his promises when he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Uh, a, a believers uh, of, uh, uh, hope is more assured because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was the song that we were singing uh, a few moments ago. <coughs> Jesus Christ is alive. Because my, my Lord is alive, I am uh, living. We know that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ has been described. He is the hope of glory. Our foundation of our hope is the, uh, is the risen Christ. If we were preaching about a Christ who is dead and gone, we will not be having any hope in our life. We will not have any uh, any uh, desire or any uh, uh, right to say anything beyond the way. But our Lord Jesus Christ, well, although He was dead, He has risen and gone beyond uh, the death and is living. Our Lord Jesus Christ has conquered death through his uh, death or dying on the cross. He could not win over the victory over death uh, without dying on the cross. Uh, if a wrestler has to, uh, has to be victor, he has to uh, wrestle with another wrestler. He has to uh, do that wrestling. He has to uh, uh, give himself into the hands of the other wrestlers. <laughs> Sometimes you might feel that uh, here's the other guy is almost about to put him down. Uh, then the referee will come and say almost say one, two, three. <laughs> Before he says three, then he has to lift up his shoulder or head. Uh, the same way the uh, the uh, the wrestler uh, the the death had almost uh, about to conquer the Lord. He was uh, he was keeping him down. Yeah. On, the, on the third day, uh, the, although the death tried to conquer him and keep him in the grave, on the third day he rose again. He, uh, he gave himself to die, but uh, because of his death, he conquered death and he came back. <laughs> because our Lord had conquered death, we do not have to have any fear about it. That's why we can boldly say, where is your victory or death? Because our Lord Jesus Christ is uh, has risen and is living today. That is our hope and that is our, uh, our foundation of hope. Uh, when Paulus, uh, Paul is writing to Titus, in chapter 2, it, say, it says about this uh, hope as a blessed hope. Chapter 2. Uh, because the Lord Jesus Christ is living today, it is a, a lively hope. It says in verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our service. Uh, Blessed hope, glorious appearance, appearing of the great God. Our hope is so blessed because we are waiting for the appearance, glorious appearance of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is risen today, our uh, hope is uh, living or lively hope. Because our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back again. And, and that is why our hope is so blessed. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who is going to come back to this world. Most of the people who have uh, gone away from this world is not going to come back to the world. The Lord leaders of this world have died and they have uh, buried in their graves. I have written that uh, particular song, Gidam Gidam Jai Jai Gidam. And uh, there we sing that uh, many of the leaders of the world have been uh, buried in the in the graves. <laughs> He is the only one who has conquered death and is living today. He is the only one who has, uh, was able to tell to his disciples, I am going to come back as I am going Any Anyone else who had lived in this world was uh, never able to say that I am going to come back. The leaders of this world have departed from this world and gone forever. Uh, in Tamil Nadu there is a custom. If somebody comes into your home, when he leaves uh, after saying goodbye, uh, you know how they say? Uh, they say, let me come or something like that. Uh, he says, he says uh, he's, he's going, but he's saying, uh, let me, yeah, I'm coming. He's not saying that I'm going. Uh, how do we say in Malayal? He says, I'm going. Uh, then the other guy will say, all right, go, go. That's how we Malayalis say. Uh, the Tamil people, we don't say that. Uh, and if, if somebody say like that, I'm going, that means uh, he's going in anger or something. I'm going, no? Uh, then uh, the other will say, why you are saying like that? Uh, you didn't like this place or something? Uh, you should not say like that. Uh, you cannot say that I'm going and just go. Uh, what, you know what you must say? Uh, you should say, uh, I'm coming. Then the other guy will say, you go and come back. Uh, when we go to a Tamil home, uh, we ask, uh, is the man of the house is there? Uh, when, uh, is he not here? Then uh, they will say, don't you know? Then they will say, uh, this old man has left. Uh, they will say, he has gone. Uh, what, what does that mean? That means he has died and gone. Uh, somebody dies, uh, they, nobody says that I'm going to come back. He has, he has gone. Uh, he is gone forever. Uh, uh, in this world, everybody who has died has just gone. But uh, only the Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm going to come back. I'm coming. It is only the Lord Jesus Christ said. He said, I'm going, but I'll come back. Because our hope is so blessed uh, uh, because of that fact. Our Lord Jesus Christ is going to come into this world very soon. There is no doubt He's coming, he's so here. And when he comes, everybody who is dead in Christ shall rise up And those who have put their Christ, uh, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ in the life, we will be transformed. And then uh, with this transformed body, we will be caught up and we will be uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a blessed hope that we have. It is a lively hope. It is also a blessed hope. It is a sure and a steadfast hope. And it is a steadfast hope. Because God cannot lie and the prom His promises cannot change. That is why our hope is so sure and steadfast. And that uh, hope is going to take you beyond the veil. I'm going to uh, conclude my thoughts with a prayer. Uh, let me ask you this question. Do you have the uh, uh, hope in your life? 
ഒന്നുമല്ല ഒരൊറ്റക്ക് I am putting my trust in the word of God and it is the it is the Lord's word and that is why my hope is and I I have the faith that the one who uh, given the promise is able to fulfill those promises and I have uh, received the word from a Lord who cannot change his word my feelings might change but I have not put my trust in my feelings but I have put the trust in the word of God and it is also a lively hope because uh, he lives I live also I'm not serving a Christ who is died and uh, dead and gone but I'm serving a risen Savior and he is going he's the one who is going to come back to this world he's going to come to this world very soon he's going to uh, rule this world about a thousand years then there's going to be a judgment will be poured out on us there's going to be a white uh, throne of judgment and all the men who had uh, who had died with our Christ will stand before then there will be new uh, new uh, new uh, heaven and new earth and then uh, the children of god will be reign in that uh, new world a new uh, uh, heaven and earth forever and throughout the eternity but with that hope i have written a small a, a song it is the blessed hope that a child of god will have a lively hope uh, may, uh, we should be able to give an answer to those who ask you about this hope that you have and the lord help us to live in that way in the, in the days if, are, if any one of you do not have this uh, hope in your life 
You should not leave uh, the world without a hope in the Lord Jesus. You should not be like those who do not have any hope. You, cannot, you can become a, uh, a possessor of this hope in this uh, You have to put your trust in the word of God. It says uh, if you put your trust you, uh, in me, you will have eternal life. It says if you put your trust in the Lord, you, you will not have any condemnation. Yeah, tonight, uh, may ha the Lord help you to put your trust in Will you say this prayer, the Lord I believe, I want to surrender my life uh, in, in, uh, to you. May the Lord, uh, Lord please uh, uh, make me a possessor of this hope. May the Lord give you that uh, blessed and lively hope in your life. In your life. May the Lord bless each and every one of us. and I thank you for this word of God, such an inspiration for me and all of us. Presented by BrethrenNews.com